celebrate me every year. I am goddess Easter. Me. Goddess of the moon and Easter. Moon. You have to know who I am. Okay. Let's take this all the way back to when I reigned. Well, started to reign supreme because obviously I still do. See, my husband was Nimrod. He was the great grandchild of Noah. All right. But don't be mistaken. Nimrod was not like Noah. You see, people saw Nimrod as a little bit evil. He did things that people didn't like, but that's okay, right? We all do things that people don't like. I, I mean, yes, he was a bit of a dictator and he used and abused people, but it's okay. I mean, my husband was powerful. He had followers. He had people following every word that he ever said. And I guess they got so mad that they kicked him out of the Babylonian religion. Right. Anywho, I then found out that I was pregnant. But it wasn't Nimrod's baby. Okay, so what? At that time, they were going to stone me. They were going to kill me. So I had to come up with a plan. I couldn't let them know that this was not my dead husband's baby. So I heard a little story about a Messiah coming. So I decided to tell the people of the land that I was pregnant with the Messiah that I was having God's baby, that this was Nimrod reincarnated in me, and these idiots believed it. All right. <laughs> Honestly, when I told it, I didn't know how far it would go, but it went, and then it kept going, and then it kept going, and, and I had to keep covering, and I told people that Nimrod was the God of the sun. Yeah. And they believed me. They believed me so much they named a whole holiday after me. All right. Easter. And so I was known as the goddess of the land, of not only the moon, but fertility, remember? So we had temples, kind of like the one that you're in, except for we worshiped a little different. You see, instead of having deacons and and ministers, I had prostitutes. And I would have prostituted you, and you, and you, and all of you would have reported to me. At least we would have had plenty of babies, right? That's what we did in the temple. To worship, we had orgies. That's what we did. That's why I was known as the goddess Easter. Yeah. So keep going on. Keep saying happy Easter. Keep buying your outfits and going to your sales and keep celebrating me. Oh my goodness, I didn't think that 2,000 years later you still would be sitting here acting like you don't know who I am when the Savior Jesus Christ came and died for your yeah. sins, yet you still won't call it Resurrection Sunday. You will call it Happy Easter. Happy me. Happy fertility goddess. You all look nice in your Easter dresses in your Easter outfits. So thank you. Keep it going. And remember, happy Easter. All right. So, uh, you know, a lot of people, they, they take this week and they commercialize it and they don't realize that uh, it really has nothing to do with uh, chocolate bunnies. It has nothing to do with colored eggs. The only thing about that is that those are meant to be symbols. And the only relationship is that they are symbols. Because as I teach you all the time, the rabbit, that symbol came out the church. And the rabbit, you know, rabbit, uh, they produce rapid new life. 
And so the rabbit coming out of the church was about producing rapid new life. Because if you know anything about rabbits, I had like a couple rabbits, Mama Alma. I had a couple rabbits about two weeks ago. I put up last night, I had about 12 rabbits. Because rabbits don't waste no time. When rabbits heard when it said be fruitful and multiply. Y'all don't hear me. And, and, so, and so rabbits. And so the rabbit came out of the church. It was a symbol. But the world took our symbol and made the, the bunny chocolate. And, and so now we get so much caught up on the chocolate. Also the egg. It came out the church because the egg represents new life. And the rabbit represents rapid new life. Now, the Easter egg hunt, that's just something for the children. But biblically, it's not connected because you don't have to. Jesus doesn't hide behind anything. Come on, say amen, somebody. You don't have to find him in the grass. I'm just trying to teach a little bit. You don't have to find him in the grass. He said, whosoever will, let them. He ain't hiding nowhere. I wish I had some help up in here. He ain't hiding. He wants you to find him. He wants you to find him. So I just want y'all to understand. I want y'all to understand. That, and, and you'll find out today why you rarely, very seldom, hear us call Resurrection Sunday Easter. Because when you think about where Easter comes from, you're talking about a fertility goddess of the sun. And so basically, when we say Happy Easter, we're really giving her promos. Say amen, somebody. But at the same time, your people that have not been taught where the name comes from, don't you beat them up. When they say Happy Easter, you know what they mean. You know they ain't saying Happy Goddess. They say Happy. So, so understand, and, and just thank God when you know better, you do better. So I want us to be educated and to understand, understand that, yeah, it's, it's nice to look good and look nice, but that's not really what the day itself is all about. So, so, so look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Look them there and I say, neighbor, I love you and I see you. To give God some praise. Amen. Because y'all, first of all, it was Holy Monday. Monday was the day that they had the cleansing of the temple because the money changers had turned the temple into a flea market, selling knockoffs, knockoff doves, knockoff sheep with one eye. And Jesus came and he said, my father's house is a place of worship and you've made it a den of thieves. Jesus wasn't happy about that. So Jesus started whooping folk and running them out. Get out of my daddy's house. Also on Monday, Jesus went and he saw a fig tree. And there was a tree that was not bearing figs. And Jesus looked at the tree and it said, if you're not bearing no fruit, you might as not even be here. And Jesus cursed the fig tree. That was on Monday. And then on Tuesday, Jesus spoke his woes against the Pharisees. Somebody say Sadducees. I broke it down to sad, you see. <laughs> Jesus had his woes. And it's at this time that this day is when it was thought when Jesus and the Pharisees started to really clash. That's when they tried to trap him. You said you were the son of God. Start trying to put him in a trap. And that was Tuesday. Another reason this day is important is because Jesus had his discourse to the disciples on the Mount of Olives. It's also that evening that things were beginning to change. But then there was Wednesday. Wednesday of Holy Week has been referred to as Spy Wednesday. Somebody say spy. Because on Wednesday, things started to turn for the worse. 
Jesus was in Bethany. And he was in the house of a brother by the name of Simon the leper. And when he was there, as he sat at the table, there was a woman by the name of Mary. And Mary came to anoint Jesus with a precious perfume. It wasn't any perfume, y'all. This wasn't no cheap Charlie. But this was some bond number nine. You know, bond number nine, that's $200 a bottle. I know you know that. Say amen, somebody. It was the most expensive perfume in the day. And so you would have thought for somebody to come and to anoint somebody that had woke up dead folk, to anoint somebody that had made blind folk see and lame folk walk, you would have thought that his boys would have been celebrating. You would have thought that they'd been happy, but a lot of them was undercover haters. And they looked down at Mary instead of looking up to Mary. Fellas had a problem. Can't you hear them saying, woman, why would you waste your oil and your perfume on Jesus' feet? And then one real hater, Judas, somebody say Judas. Jesus, that money could have been spent on the poor. Really, Jay? Come on, Jay. You know you didn't care nothing about the poor. But Judas Iscariot, he wanted to keep all of the duckies for his deceiving self. So Jesus is sitting there and he notices that Judas is feeling a certain kind of way. You know, Judas was always a snake. Matter of fact, if you remember in the scripture, when Jesus had the Lord's Supper, he threw a hint that Judas was the snake. He looked at all of his disciples and he says, all of you are clean except one of you. And he was referencing Judas. He didn't mean that all of them had took a bath. He didn't mean that all of them had took a shower. But he knew that Judas was dirty. And so right now, we see it from that day, Judas saw the opportunity to get messy in this situation. So that's why they called it Spy Wednesday. Somebody say spy. spy. And I want y'all to know the word spy in the context of this text, it doesn't just mean a spy or somebody who's watching. But Superintendent Read, it means that ambush. The word spy here means to sneak upon. It needs to hit somebody with a sucker punch. Say amen, somebody. Amen. And then we go to Holy Thursday. You often hear people refer to it as Monday Thursday. This is the actual day that Jesus had his final meal with his disciples. Now, some people say that it was the Last Supper, and some people say that it was the Lord's Supper. It was both based on where you at. It was the Last Supper for them because it was their Last Supper. But since some of you have ate since then, then it's not our Last Supper. It's the Lord's Supper. So it's not something in the Bible that doesn't make sense. And can you imagine how awkward it is sitting at the table with a snake? Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. I mean, you sit at the table with a snake, and the snake has the audacity and the unmitigated gall to reach his hand over. And come on, say amen, somebody. And what I like about Jesus, he knew what Judas was about, but he didn't retaliate. Because why would you retaliate when you know that ultimately you're going to elevate? Come on, say amen, somebody. Amen. So Jesus didn't trip as poisonous, as pathetic as it was. He knew that Judas had a purpose. Somebody say purpose. purpose. Now, I'm like y'all. I was not feeling Judas at all. I don't like what he did to Jesus. But I tell you one thing, I ain't mad. Because you got to understand, if Judas did not do what he done, I would have never got what I got. 
Come on, say amen, somebody. So you got to understand the end result is that Jesus had to be crucified. And he would not have been crucified and died if Judas had not turned him over to die. Now, some people will argue, some theologians will suggest that Judas lost his salvation. But I tend to raise the issue that he never had it. Because Jesus says all of you are clean except, amen, one of you. So I want y'all to understand, not only did Judas be about his business, but Jesus knew it. And he didn't dismiss him, but he laid there and he allowed him to run his game. And then after that, before we get to Friday, there was something else. Jesus decided that he wanted to wash their feet because Jesus was about humility. Now, I know now we're so used to pastors having eight armor bearers, even if they got ten members. Say amen, somebody. Armor bearer to open up your Bible, to pour your water, to wipe your sweat. I don't understand why I need that when my hands work. I don't understand why. I've been preaching since I was 12, but all of a sudden, I need somebody to open my Bible. I'm blessed to be able to open my Bible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But Jesus wanted to teach them a lesson in humility. Uh-huh. And he said, brothers, can you see them? Take your shoes off. I want to wash your feet. Bunions and all. <laughs> come on now. Because they didn't wash Stacy Adams and alligators. They had sandals. So, you know, if you didn't walk... All day in some sand and some sandals and it's hot. Come on now. You know those feet are cutting up. Come on, don't play with me. Come on, lady, don't play with me. The lady that's doing your feet. I got a problem. I got a problem. You don't know what she's saying, but she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. You got to at least wash their feet before they came. Man. So, so, you know, Peter, he's the outspoken one. Oh, Jesus, you can't wash my feet. He says, well, Peter. Wait a minute, you don't understand what I'm about. If I can't wash your feet, then I can't be a part of you, and you can't be a part of me. Jesus would shut your mouth. Since you said that, wash me all. Come on, say amen, somebody. But he was teaching him a lesson in humility. So that was thirsty. But then, right before we get to Friday, Jesus went into the Garden of Gethsemane. And when he went into the Garden of Gethsemane, guess who shows up? Judas. Judas had made a deal for 30 pieces of silver to sell my Lord. Can you imagine? Now, some people say that Judas was there to show them his face. He did not need to be there to show his face because everybody knew his face. He ran him out the temple. He sat there and he took care of people. He raised people. They knew his face. Judas was not there to show the face. Judas was there to show them the place because they had to find Jesus at a place that wasn't nobody there because they already knew if you tried to touch this man in public, it would have been a riot. They would have told the town up. So Judas caught him. Well, I know where he hangs out at. And so can't you see Judas with his snake behind? Your father, somebody your friend is supposed to be your friend. And they walk up to you and they said, Lord, just let me say to you right now, look at your name, say neighbor. neighbor. Watch who be kissing on you. Because it just might be a snake. And some of y'all have already been kissed by some snakes. I ain't going to ask you to testify. No, I ain't going to mic. But some of y'all, be very careful. Because that's why I like a hug. Because a hug better than a kiss. A hug, you know somebody care about you. But most times, let's just be real, most times a kiss is just trying to get to another level. Well, come on, don't talk. Don't look at me with that, scent, that type of face. Well, I know y'all saved. Y'all ain't heard of foreplay. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Some of y'all ain't y'all got four. Y'all got 12 play. One. Come on, say man, somebody. Two, y- 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 come on now, don't, don't, don't get that saved on me. Three, come on, save me, somebody. 
So be very careful. Be very careful. Don't act like y'all don't know Aura. Right, come on, that's right. That's all right, Deborah. Amen. I Kelly. Amen. Amen. So now we get ready to fry.